Okay, welcome back to Rails Minute. Hi everyone, I'm Dan Bostrom, Rails Member Engagement Manager, and I'm here with Rails Executive Director, Deirdre Brennan. Uh, this is our effort to bring you short videos where you can find out more about what is happening with Rails. So Deirdre, on Tuesday, April 27th, we're hosting a Rails member update. Uh, one of the big items for presentation is uh, Greg Pronovitz, who is going to be talking about the future of Rails delivery. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Greg and what he's going to be talking about? I would be happy to, but first I have to uh, uh, point out that there is another um, attendee at this minute, and that is our cat, Augustus, who yes. is back there somewhere. So say hi, Gus. <laughs> Not likely. Uh, Anyway, uh, yes. Yeah, so Greg Pronovitz uh, was the um, is re uh, retired as a, uh, a Massachusetts Library System Director, um, and he is now a consultant. and He does a lot of work with delivery because um, at a certain point in um, his life as uh, the uh, the director there, the uh, they actually you know the cost of delivery really skyrocketed. And so he had to do a lot of very creative things to find ways to uh, reduce the cost. So um, he did a study for us that we reported on a couple of times uh, at board meetings and probably in, a, in some other, um, uh, like in the, uh, some of our other committee meetings. And essentially um, one of the things that he is a big proponent of is uh, labelless sorting, and, and this it doesn't so much um, help Rails or the delivery systems. It helps the libraries because a lot of time is spent on, uh, you know, uh, creating and applying or removing uh, labels, and it involves. Uh, changes at the at the sorting sites because there you have to it's called a, a sort to light um, uh, <clears throat> a technology not RFID it's uh, much that's way too expensive so uh, anyway I uh, I strongly encourage everybody to come and listen to Greg at the member update it's really interesting I think the bottom line is that we have to find ways in Illinois to reduce the sort of you know personal labor involved in um, in sorting um, and, and you know potentially driving I suppose as well although that seems harder until you know drones really get you know more advanced and etc. But in any case, uh, we've got to do something about that because it's very time consuming and it's very, very expensive. Uh, so um, so that's, well, that's what he's going to be talking to us about. And I think the people will find it really interesting. Yeah, yeah, he, he's, a, he's a great, uh, it's fun to listen to him talk. He really, uh, you can tell that he loves what he does. And, uh, and if you want to get, uh, if you want to get down, down and dirty with logistics, Greg is- Greg Exactly. Is <laughs> right. Yeah, if you if you really like that kind of, you know, hands on stuff, you're going to love this. So. Yeah. Yep. OK, uh, so Rails board elections start next week. Who is running? Who is voting? And how does it all <laughs> work? <laughs> well, yes, the nominating committee met just, uh, I think, on Monday this week to uh, uh, confirm the candidates eligibility in the ballot. So, uh, you know, and we really made a huge push this year to get a more uh, uh, diverse, inclusive, uh, equitable uh, ballot, uh, you know, pool of candidates. And we are thrilled at what we have ended up with. And, and when I talk about, you, you know, EDI, I'm not, I'm talking about, you know, various facets. Obviously, geographic has always been um, a, a big, um, you know, a major uh, issue for us to get, you know, geographic diversity. Um, but, and, and, you know, we've tried in the past, but you really have to reach out in different ways, obviously. So um, we, uh, we realized that we, while we love to have directors on our board, um, it's not just directors who, you know, use real services or are, you know, rep you know, represented by rails um, in rails. So it, we really made a push to get 
non-directors because we want you, you know we want a range of points of view and we that you know had that is really got a lot of diversity in that way as well so we have two at large uh, seats open and 12 candidates so it's wow. very competitive and then we have three uh, public library trustee seats open and um, we have five candidates for that so um yeah we're really pleased the members vote every member library gets a vote it's up to the member library to decide who casts the vote it's usually the director sometimes it's the board chair if it's a public library um and i want to make a personal plea because we always, we have 1,266 members, member libraries. We, our, you know, total vote always tops out around 200, which is really not good voter turnout. And you don't even have to go anywhere. You know, this is like really easy voting. So please, 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 everybody vote. And please vote with an eye to, you know, uh, picking the best candidates, of course, but also through the EDI lens, that would really be great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, really, uh, we do hope to get as, uh, as much participation in those elections as possible. So, so just go to our website. It's really easy. It starts next week. It runs through the first week of May. So let's let's see if we can get, you know, double. So 400 votes. Yes. 400, 400 votes. I like that. I like yes. that. Um, OK, so what else is happening around Rails? What else would you like people to know about? Well, one of the big things that's going on right now is our advocacy uh, efforts, and the board has been very involved in this as well, um, for um, the funding of a statewide database package. And uh, you know, I want I want everybody to know that we're one of only two states in the country that doesn't do this. Um, and, uh, you know, Michigan, all of our neighbors do this. And, and what it means is that there would be an additional separate appropriation. This is not in exchange for, it's not switching us, you know, any existing funding out. It's more money every year to support the, the um, a statewide uh, purchase of a, a suite of databases, online resources could include the New York Times, Ancestry.com, who knows, but that would all be decided by uh, a selection committee of, of librarians and of all types. Um, we're asking for $5 million. We've gotten a lot of uh, good uh, traction on this at this point, there is a, a bill that is being is going to be filed. Um, um, it's co-sponsored by uh, Minority Leader Representative Jim Durkin and uh, Representative Michelle Musman. At this point, um, we've had um, uh, interest expressed also from um, Speaker Welch's office, and it would um, what would be done is that uh, a task force would be established that would be made up of librarians who represent everybody, all the libraries in Illinois, to talk about the need for this, where the funding should come from, how much we need, and uh, you know, report back to the General Assembly uh, by next January 1 um, it, to how to do this. So I think this is really positive that we're you know, finally getting some traction. Uh, you know, we know that in you know, Michigan, for example, um, they spend, I don't think they spend 5 million, maybe they spend 3 million or so. Um, and they have figured out that libraries, you know, combined the savings to libraries is over $90 million a year. Because when you think about it, libraries are buying the same databases over and over and over again. Yeah or libraries don't can't afford any databases. So not only does this save money, but it it you know helps to level the playing field especially for patrons and it will it would be available it would be available to the unserved population as well. So it's there's no downside to it and it's a little amount of money and it's I mean it really is. So yeah. Um, yeah. and I think the bipartisan support indicates that that so it's great. What a journey. What a journey this has been. Yes, yes. So it will continue to be. Yes. So we will um, we'll get some information about the bill up 
as soon as we actually, you know, it's still not final, but mm -hmm. just so everybody knows what's going on. That's Stay great. Tuned. Thank you. That's exciting news. Yep. Uh, okay, this is the point where we turn to member questions. And if you do have a question, you can either leave us a comment below or you can email them to communications at railslibraries.info. So as of Monday the 12th, this past Monday, we've ended the quarantine requirement for materials uh, moving through our delivery service. What prompted that decision and what does it mean for libraries? Well, then the knowledge about the, the COVID-19 virus uh, transmission has been evolving. I mean, we, you know, the Realm project, and I just had a meeting with them this morning, has been working on this for a year. And, it, you know, it, last March or whatever month we're in April, we really had no idea uh, how the virus was transmitted. We have learned, thanks to the Realm study and some others, that it really doesn't, you know, it's not, it doesn't, transmit from surfaces. It's really air droplets and you know sneezing and all that. Um, so the, uh, the CDC, you know there have been a variety you know evolving knowledge, variety of reports that have said you don't need to quarantine as long or 24 hours was on the CD website for a long time. Um, and uh, a couple of weeks ago they issued a report saying, it's, re it's really the, the danger of this kind of transmission is very low. And so it just seemed like the right time. Um, the, you know, the science has, has shown. So that's great. That's, that's the whole point of, you know, doing this kind of research. So um, we ended our, uh, the quarantine for materials in our delivery system. If libraries still want to quarantine their own, they absolutely can. We're not saying anything that's, you know, local decision, obviously. Uh, Heartland also um, ended their quarantine on Wednesday. We have really heard nothing back from people. We got one, I think, you know, thank you email, but I think everybody was just, it was like, oh, right, that makes sense, kind of a, you know, response. So at least that's my interpretation. So, well, that's great. That that yeah. that's um, that's really nice that it's been this kind of careful consideration over yeah. time, and obviously, as you said, sort of an evolution with the with the scientific research out there. Um, so I think libraries are really going to appreciate that. Um, you know, now that it's ended. Yep. So, okay. Well, that will do it for us this week on Rails Minute. Uh, JJ, I really appreciate it. Uh, we will talk to you next week. Bye, Gus. Bye, Gus. <laughs> Bye, Dan. <laughs> Bye.